Hey guys, Robo Gabby here with another great tutorial. Today we will continue discussing Robot C basics for Vex IQ robots and breaking down not one, wait, but two sample programs. Ah! Oh my god! Which are the point turn and the swing turns. So let's get started! So before we get into Robot C, let's review some general programming fundamentals for data types, variables, and functions. To help us better understand these fundamentals, let's navigate to WikiJunior Programming for Kids at Wikibooks. So let's navigate to this site. Wiki Junior Programming for Kids is a book that was made to help kids like me easily understand the fundamentals of programming. Now let's click on variables and data types. So first we need to start off with asking ourselves, what is a data type? So a data type is a data storage format that can contain a specific type or a range of values. When we program, we need to work with different kinds of data, which is why data types are very useful. The most common data types are logical, textual, and numeric data types. For example, a string is a data type used to represent a textual data type. So now, let's understand what a variable is. Variables are used in computer programming as a jar that stores data, objects, and references. Variables are assigned both a data type as well as a value. For example, a variable named foo can be a string data type that has the value hello world. Or the variable foo can be an integer data type which represents numerical items having the value of 11, which is how old I will be in a few days. The last programming fundamental that we will review today is a function. Now click on the back button and let's navigate to inputs, outputs, and processes. Once the page loads, scroll all the way to the very bottom. In computer programming, functions are often called procedures, subroutines, or subprograms. It is basically a small program that performs a certain task. Functions are similar to math functions in that they may reference parameters which are passed or input into the function. A parameter is just our value that is passed to a function. Now to better understand this, let's open up Robot C. And to open our sample code by clicking on the Open File orange folder and navigating to VexIQ, then Basic Movements, and double click on PointTurns.C. This program will have your robot make a right point turn for one second and then make a left point turn afterwards. At the end of the program, all motors will shut down automatically and turn off. So now let's break down each line of this code. As a reminder, always remember that the first line tells the Robot C compiler what type of robot you will be using. In Robot C, anytime you see two forward slashes or a forward slash and an asterisk, that represents a comment. The double forward slash is a single line comment, and a forward slash asterisk is a multi line comment. And you have to end a multi line comment with an asterisk and a forward slash. In this multi line comment, Robot C provides us with the robot configuration for the VexIQ Clawbot. In the 15th line is your task main. The task main decides which code the robot will run as part of the main program. The task main is the main function where the compiler will execute all of the code within task main's curly brackets. Within task main, you basically have two commands that are being used, which are set motor speed and sleep. The first two set motor speed functions set the left and right motor both at full power, putting the left motor at full power reverse 
and the right motor at, pull, at full power forward. The set motor speed is a function made by Robot C that is used to set the speed of the motors. The set motor speed function only takes two parameters. Those two parameters are the motor index and the speed. Below that is the sleep function. The sleep function only takes one parameter, which is a number representing milliseconds. From what I have discovered, the sleep function actually tells the robot how far it needs to move in milliseconds. These three commands will make our robot do a right point turn for one second. The next three commands below repeats the process, however it reverses the motor speed to make the robot do a left point turn for one second. Let's go click on Download to Robot to compile our code and open RVW. Once RVW opens, either log in to your CS2N account, which I still haven't discussed but I will at some point, or log in locally. Let's select First Program under Basic Movements and click Start Challenge and let's click the play button. It's telling me that my challenge is complete, but that is only because I'm using the RVW challenge pack. If this happens to you, just click on continue and hit play again. So do you have an idea on what a point turn is? So now let's go back to Robot C. Navigate to your sample programs and let's open swingturns.c. If you look closely, you will see that the swing turn code and the point turn code is almost exactly the same. The only difference is, for the left and right swing turn, instead of setting one of the motors at reverse full power, it just turns the motor off. Let's see what this looks like. Click Download to Robot. Let's bring back up RVW and go back to the first programming challenge. Now click the play button and let's see what the swing turn looks like. Can you tell what the difference is between a swing turn and a point turn? Write in the comments to let me know. So today you guys have learned some programming fundamentals for data types, variables, and functions. And we finished the Robot C basic movement sample programs. In my next tutorial, we will start discussing sensors. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and if you're not already, then follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Please give this video a thumbs up and let me know how I did. And remember, girls can be engineers too. Bye!